I work for a firm that's called WSP here in Sweden. It's a, it's a fairly large firm. Uh, it's a global firm with about 15,000 people. And uh, we, I can say that um, our main offices, or we are largest in the United Kingdom, in Sweden, and in Canada. Our um, headquarters are now in Montreal. The thing is, I'm an archaeologist. Okay? I work with hundreds of engineers. Can you imagine that? You're trying to talk to these people. Why do I work with them? Well, the firm actually works with consultation and management of all kinds of um, projects so doing uh, within both the built and the natural, the natural uh, environment. And uh, my role there is to work with them when they make, for example, they build something new. Let's say we have a project, they're going to make, a, let's say, an arena, a road, something new. And they have to do uh, some kind of a study to see what's there in the place. You see, you have the site, and you have to study if there is cultural heritage remains. Is it possible to build here? Yes, no. So what we do is what you call um, environmental impact assessment. There are different stages in this. First, we go out and we do um, sort of an inventory to see what, what is there. Often you have, thanks to the National Heritage Board, there is already in their database a record of the existing or the documented finds, but sometimes uh, most of these things are, have been documented, let's say, at the beginning of the century, in the 30s, so if you go out today with a more modern point of view, you can find other things. Uh, and in this process, let's say we make these environmental impact assessments to show if the, there is, there are things in the place or not, if you can build or not, the process goes on. You present these, the client says, oh, okay, we have to take certain measures. Maybe if, if, you, if you build here, you're, you're going to take away uh, something. Maybe you can give something back. There's, we talk about what you were speaking, Marie, earlier about mitigation, you know, compensation, if you want to call it that. If you, but the problem is mainly trying to show to, to give to the public something back, even to the engineers. And here's where we came into contact with what in the, in the last years has been called new technology, it's called augmented reality. And basically, basically what it is, as it is that you can come out to the site and you can see, uh, get information right at the site about something that's there. Let's say you have a remain, you have ruins of something, you can see actually, you can get a 3D reconstruction of how it looked like in the past, you can walk right up to it, you can take out your mobile phone, you can punch it in, you can get this reconstruction right over the site, you can see how large it was, you can get a different feeling for it. Maybe it's better if I give you an example. We, we did a case study um, last year for uh, a site um, which lays uh, on Lake Melanen, but more inwards. And this is a World Heritage site, which is partially on both on two islands. Uh, it's on Björkö and on Alusö. I can you say there is a post conference tour tomorrow to that place? Okay, wow, that's good. You guys will remember me. <laughs> anyway, um, the story behind this is this 
this side is the remains here go back to early Bronze Age and they extend in, well into uh, the medieval period. But the thing is, Birka is, a, is an old Viking town. And at Hovgården, which is up here, it has been studied. The, the conclusion is that while the town was here, the Swedish king was living here. And we're talking about 900 AD, more or less. And afterwards, about the, in the 12th century, this town is abandoned. The, kin, the king continues to live there. Hmm? So that's his res residence. And about 1270, there is a king, it's called Magnus Laudulos, which builds a palace at the site where the, the main castle was. So it's the, the, he builds a palace in brick at this site. And this is, is it's famous because this is where the king here establishes what is the, 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 what is the first Swedish nobility through an ordinance. This is seven, uh, 1279 he does this. And afterwards, at the end of that century, the palace is abandoned. And when you visit the site today, there are very few remains there. But my, my point is this. When you, you can arrive to this site in two manners. Either you can, you can take a car, bus, or you can bicycle there from Adelso northwards. Or you can come from, when you visit Birka, like you're going to do probably tomorrow, you can go over from Birka to Adelso with a small boat. And on, in both manners, however you get there, the first thing is you're going to see a sign. In this case, it's very close to the water. In the other, the other case, when you come to the road, it's right outside. But between the sign and Alsnohus, which is the palace that the king built, there's about 200 meters. Okay? So you have to run back and forth to relate to what this thing is. This is a picture that shows you, it's kind of light in here, uh, some part of the walls which are left over from Osnohus, from the palace. And it's, it's pretty much not more than this. You can see the remains, you can see the plan, the floor plan more or less, you can make it out on the floor, but you don't get the idea of the size of the palace, how it looked like. So what we did is we thought, with all the technology and all these engineers, can't we make something that we can just walk out there and be able to see at least the volume, you know, experience it in a different manner? Is it possible? So we took, these are reconstructions done from, by people working at the, the City Museum in Stockholm, and then some historian, the two different versions of how they think that Alsnohus, the king's castle, would have looked like. So we took this and we made a reconstruction with lines and using Google SketchUp in an easy 3D model you can find online. And the thing was, we wanted to place it exactly over the ruins. That, that, here comes the technical part, the crucial part. And uh, by using a simple browser, actually, we use Layar, which is, a, which is a browser that you can use both on, on Android and even for, um, for different kinds of pads. And we were able to get it by, I think the, the difference was about six meters. But when we came out there, we were really amazed. It was a lot of surprise because we, you have to go all the way out there and see, oh, is it going to work? <laughs> so you, we held it up and yeah, it, it did work. And I had a video here, but I don't think it, it might work here. No. 
But anyway, what we got, got out of this was that, in other words, from instead of seeing this, we were able to see the size of the Austin Hughes and how it looked like. And not only that, is that we could feed in the two different reconstructions. We had the two different theses of how it looked like, and you could change from one to, the, to another. Just see, okay, looks like this, and oh, maybe it looked like that. You can play with that. The other thing was also that you could, we could feed in other information. Actually, at the site where Olsen um, Hus, where the castle is, there are other things. You have some rune stones, you have also uh, other such, uh, church, and uh, we made a list of all these. So when you come out there, you can see, okay, these are all the things that are out here. Oh, I'm interested in seeing a, a certain rune stone. You could touch it, and it, it, it would, you could hold it up and say, oh, there it is. You could walk, it tells you how many meters is to the, the rune stone. You can walk, prob, uh, actually walk up to it. So it, it becomes interactive in a different other, other way. With the, with the castle, what was fascinating was not only to, to be able to see it in, in the volume and get the, a sense of how large it is, is that you could even walk into it and walk around it. You could always see, aha, uh -huh, this, is, this is where it was. And for us, this is also useful in the field because with the different projects we have, you can feed in for example, a road that's going to be built, you walk out there and you hold it up, you say, aha, uh -huh, this is what it's going to look like. You can take your client with you, you can take the general public with you and, and show it to them. So it can also be like a tool for discussion. And some of the problems that we face up to now is that we we're not getting enough detail in 3D as we want to. And the, the geographic accuracy was, at the time that we tried this last year, was between five and 10 meters. But yesterday I was talking to one of our geographical engineers. He's narrowed it down to half a meter, so it's really good now. So this is a thing that, with technology, just gets better and better. So we just see possibilities and just positiveness for the future with this. Do you have any questions? Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, it's not so much a question, but I wanted to add, uh, to add something. Mm -hmm. We work um, um, help with a conference about interpretation. Yes. Um, uh, we are currently in Amsterdam. Um, we are busy with a project. In Amsterdam, we have the Portuguese synagogue. And it was the place where Spinoza was expelled because his ideas were too more modern. Okay. So we are working on an augmented reality application okay. where you watch through your iPad or your iPhone, you watch the synagogue, you mm -hmm. just see it as it is glass, eh? like mm -hmm. I explained. Yeah. And then suddenly the door opens, Spinoza walks out, <laughs> and he starts telling you a story about what happened to him. Yeah. So that's, I think, for, for us as interpreters, it's interesting that you can also uh, include storytelling uh, using augmented reality. Absolutely. What we did in, in this case, with one of the rune stones, we had some sound effects that when you walked up to it, you could hear the carver clinking on it and okay. somebody reading the text also. Yeah. So, it, yeah, it has lots of possibilities. Uh, how do you match a uh, picture with your... Uh, with uh, the, the picture taken on the camera yes. that you're building, for example, if you, you want to ex uh, display, because the GPS is not accurate enough. Mm -hmm. uh, do you use image recognition, or what do you use to you, match it? You can have some things on site. If, you, if, if the GPS is not enough, you can have markers on site that match with the computer. You can use that. So the computer matches, or you have to align it as a user? No, actually, you can have certain spots that you can, the computer can find when you get there, if you want more accurateness. Otherwise, you can just use the GPS. Yeah. 
think so. it's getting more sophisticated, isn't it? <laughs> day by day. Yes, uh, yes. But, um, a project I've been working on in uh, Derbyshire, um, we've, we've, done a we've done an archaeological test on a big hall. Uh, so we've actually sorry, done an investigation on a hall. We've been able to measure out exactly the size of it. What we have left is about one third of the original size. Mm -hmm. We know exactly the coordinates now of, of the key corners of what was quite a large U-shaped building. Mm -hmm. And um, we have, uh, from the knowledge of the section of the building we've now got, we've still got left mm -hmm. uh, and the windows and the height and the massing of the structure. Yes. We've actually done a three three D scanning from from what we've got. And the ruins, yeah. Created mm -hmm. What the house was like in 1680, and we uh, and with fly rounds and through through the building as well. So I think it's 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 technology which is developing and developing by mm -hmm. specialists like yourselves. And yeah. I think it's a phenomenal opportunity to, to give people an understanding of what these places were like. Yes. And, uh, and one of my colleagues uh, has been using um, specialist 3D animators who have produced, um, uh, actually reproduced uh, on them that you can have on your iPad or your, or your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. You can stand in the middle of a moorland and actually be actually in the shoes of a Roman walking across the moorland. Yeah. So, the potential is, is actually being developed quite extensively in England at the moment, and and I think it's that it's. I'm sure I could give you some references to help you uh, in terms of what is is being done at the moment. I would love that. Yes, uh, I can tell you something that happened a couple of weeks ago. I was out on the field. I had a contractor. We were just surveying an area for a. a a power line that was going to go through, and we, we had some uh, Bronze Age tombs in the area. And he, the contractor says, what is this, you know, and uh, well, what, it, what it looked like. So I go back to the office, come back a week later, and we had not only drawn the whole, the tombs specifically with, with lines so you could see them better, we had placed some figures that we just drew that looked like the people from that period, just Show them. It goes, aha. And it worked. When they were going to dig to, to make these foundations for the, the masts, and when I came out there later, they had placed signs and everything, take care of this. this is the, so they, they get a better uh, understanding and when they get involved in it. So this, this helps, actually. Yeah. Any other questions? So what about, if you think about uh, the having iPad in front of you all the time, mm -hmm. you know, like walking with a camera, so you are actually have communication with iPad, but not with a ceramics run, run around. What yeah. It's difficult, yeah. You can, yeah, so you don't become dependable, uh, dependent on it. Yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah. And, and I'm sure you... Sorry, yeah? Yeah, you can see, I have a question no, no, no. after all. Um, Another, as you know, in Sweden, in many places, there is not very good internet connection. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you thought of solving that, uh, maybe with the Wi-Fi senders or yeah. something like that? There, there are, I know there are things mm -hmm. like that that you can use with solar panels and stuff like that. Have you? No, we haven't gone so much in detail with that. Yeah. You, you don't necessarily need the internet connection. Like it could be also an. Offline. Yeah, it could send out. We uh, Wi-Fi. No, without like that you have app, okay. uh, uh, an app on your phone without connection. But it's just using the GPS. Uh, yes, exactly. For GPS, you don't need internet connection. Yeah. Yeah. If you have, well, you it, it depends. It You're right, but we were th also thinking about linking to Wikipedia and all the things. So then, then we want that. Yeah. Our biggest mistake with this is that we made this pilot study out in Alunsö. It's way out there, so if you want to show the client, you have to take them there. So we're working on a, a, a new one in, in the center of Stockholm. So, so we, can, we can show, we can Makalös Palats. Yeah? You can go like this and you can see it in Kungsträdgården, yeah. <laughs> so that's the next one, yeah. Thank you. Hmm?